Yeah, this is okay. I'm okay, okay. with it. Okay, I'll just introduce you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Or is this too soon? We don't have to record. Is it I didn't soon? know we were starting right now. Yeah, give me a minute. Long Show Tarot. I am your benevolent host, the Cosmic Threader, and we are here live to tape with Kaylin Ryan. And uh, that's a cool coincidence because I, I, I took a theater program in Edmonton and my program chair, God rest his soul, Timothy Ryan, had the same last name. And he, had, he was a great influ influence on my life. And now I'm out here, you know, I don't want you guys to think I'm just a host. I'm out here doing work. I'm, I'm promoting the show, Long Show Tarot, live to tape. And uh, my guest, welcome to the welcome to the program. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Can you I see don't know me? Either. It's okay. I, I can see a wall. Hold on, I hold see on, a hold white. On. I, now I can see. Okay, me. there we go. <laughs> sorry, there sorry. About that. There's your beautiful face. All right. So are we live? What are we doing right now? Are we live or is this a test? It's live to tape. So I'm recording this. Okay. And, uh, and I can I, I can broadcast this with your permission um, later. You know, I think it's fine. And now you wanted to come on the show and talk about all kinds of things. I'm always excited to hear what you say. Like you speak and people listen. Thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, I think we all have a story to tell, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that interests me the most, besides how hysterical you are, I really enjoy your YouTube channel, is your um, your willingness to go for these leaps of faith and your willingness to kind of just surrender to the unknown and just, I don't know, like, doesn't everyone have their own challenges? But I think that you're one of the ones that sees the bigger picture and the broader scope. And I really love that you just kind of surrender to it every time you have to and i think you should surrender to it uh it's not always easy but speaking of faith i just got this this full bible this morning uh old testament and new from the the jw's uh they study the bible i'm not a jw myself but uh they know the bible man um say what you will about them they they can be annoying they ring the doorbell too many times but but they do know <laughs> the bible um yeah, I mean, they're okay. I make fun of them. I make fun of myself. I make fun of my guests. So I'm sorry if I offend you. That's not my intention. Uh, first, I want to ask you, uh, the first question I have for you, just let me check my paper here. I wrote down a list of questions for Kaylin. Um, and she's wow. a, light, a light worker's journey on, um, on Instagram and probably elsewhere. Are you a light worker's journey elsewhere? Um, yeah, I mean, on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube? Instagram. Um, most of my work is on Instagram. Yeah. So let's just look here. Oh, onking. I want to ask you about onking. What in God's name is onking? Um, this is something that you were talking about in a live, and I was trying to follow, and I'm just, I don't get it. What is it? Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just disclaimer. I'm not like a professional teacher on this topic, but it is something that interests me, and here's why. I'm all about life force. I'm all about chi. I'm all about us using it for healing and using it for just being the best versions of ourselves, right? Because when we're aware of our energy, we can just multiply and magnify, or magnify, I should say. So mm -hmm. with onking, it's really interesting because you're using an orgasm, but you're, instead what? of just giving wait, wait, it wait, away. Go back. Go back. A what? A what an now? Orgasm. An orgasm. Oh, my goodness. I haven't had yeah. one of those. Today. I know. <laughs> I was a high school English teacher, so I feel comfortable talking about weird topics, if you will, in an objective way, because this is important. Like, the orgasm is really powerful, and here's why. If you look at society and how they try to keep us in this inverted root chakra, and what I mean by that is they try to distract us. And as I said on the live with titties and ass, they want to keep us in the lower vibration of the root chakra. But what we can do is we can use old our root. By. An old lady walked by, as you said, titties and ass. I had to share that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It was meant for her. Um, but what we can do is we can utilize our lower chakras our root our solar plexus and really the sacral to kind of when you work instead of just releasing it out on the thin air the shape of the ankh you know what it looks like right it looks like a cross yeah, with a loop on top. With a loop on top. yeah 
Yeah. The, idea, the idea is this, Tim, that you, when, what, and, and it takes a little bit of practice or not. When you orgasm, you just kind of pull it up the way you would pull up a breath. And as it comes up to the crown, you kind of loop it back into your body. So you're looping in, not the actual, like, ejaculation. Yeah. Okay. Now, if, if, I need a, if I need a coach, do you, you coach this, right? So if I yeah. need a coach, no? Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. No. Mine is I just gave the best explanation I could, but there are many others on YouTube. If you look up onking, you will see there are people that can explain it probably much better than I can. I just know it's worth trying because I think any of these life force practices are worth trying. And I'm always about gaming the game, right? So I'm going to game their inverted root chakra game. And I am going to just explore these things and share them with others as they resonate, you know? I love, I love that you're brave enough to talk about this. And I love that you're exploring this. I wish you were a coach because I would hire you immediately. Um, <laughs> you are your own coach, Tim. <laughs> I'm my own coach. Okay. I, uh, okay. Maybe this is a solo exercise. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, you, you're an entrepreneur, right? You, you're into entrepreneurship yeah. and um, coaching, um, coaching star seeds, I think, specifically. Did you want to talk about that? Coach. Sorry, go ahead. Did you want to talk about star seeds at all and, and your uh, your star seed experience? Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So 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 why don't I do that and then can I, I'll tell you a little bit about the how I kind of wear multiple hats and that's how I I survive and thrive out here. Um. So I've I've always been awake, if you will, awake in the dream is what I call it. Ever since a kid, I I looked around at this place like how is everyone plowing along on this game? Anyway, it wasn't until, um, I don't know, maybe about eight, nine years ago when I decided, like, completely screw this. Like, I was a teacher for seven years. I said no. I was married. I said no. Everything in my life, I stopped living a false life because I did. And I think many starseeds, we choose to be indoctrinated so that we can either A, light up the area or B, kick rocks and get out, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're totally a lot of us are escaping what people refer to as the matrix or the grid or the trap. Um, I just call it boring, um, <laughs> you know, and because we we feel deeply inside, I think, that we have a mission. Yeah. And, and when we're stuck in these jobs that aren't part of that mission and they're taking all of our time and all of our energy, then we realize that we're, we're not in the right place. So we we start these Joe jobs, you call them nine to fives. And then it, it never lasts. For me, I never last. Never last. Either quit, never. get fired, walk out. Something always happens, right? <laughs> yeah, I've rarely been fired. Usually it's me walking off. I don't know about you, but, uh, and I'm, it's like I'm seeking. And, and I feel like with Instagram specifically, I've connected with a lot of people that are on this uh, path. You call them light workers. That's something I want to talk to you. What does light worker mean to you? What is your definition of light worker? Well, I mean, let's just start by saying that all these words are just words that are helpful in conversation. I'm not attached to the word, but light worker is exactly what it sounds like. You work with light. You work with truth. The truth is light. The dark is mistruth or truth that has yet to be uncovered. So a lot of people do this whole light love thing, and that's really cool. But I don't know that they realize that light is being brave enough to speak and live your truth and to come through authentically and evolve, you know? And to travel through the darkness, right? There's that old phrase, you know, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, I like to add, and I survived, right? And I lived yeah, through it. Yeah, and I'll feel no fear, too, because you you can't be, it, it takes bravery to live your truth and to live in your light, which, again, is the truth. So, yeah, yeah. I like um i agree with i say that often myself to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and feel no fear that's always resonated with me too yeah and i see you wear 444 on your on your uh, beautiful um um neckline there uh does does that have special meaning for you the 444 i mean it has quite a few meanings to me but it's just a necklace but for me four means solid foundations um, as far as like a numerology perspective would go, but really it means angels are all around you. So I don't know that I can wear it for myself. I Sometimes I think I wear it for others that say it. Um, it's just creating more synchronicity and ripples out there, but yeah. Good, yeah, for me it's, uh, I like seven, number seven is, uh, speaks to me. I'm a life path number nine. I don't know if you're into life paths. I'm a number nine, do you know yours? 
I'm a 22. That's kind of why the four is significant to me. So you're a leader. You're my leadership. That's why I'm following you. Um, I call you the human light lighthouse. I hope that's okay. I mean it as I a compliment. Yeah, I mean it as a compliment because I think there's a lot of people that you keep um, motivated. I think people look to you when they're they're maybe down and you bring them back into the light right and you you sort of show them a path that you know yes we're in retrograde all these planets are in retrograde but you don't have to stay down necessarily just because it's retrograde you know you can bring yourself up you can bring other people up dogs um you're always showing pictures of these adorable dogs um do you own a dog yourself or, or are you just no, no okay. I'm too much of a wanderer and, and eventually I will have my own dog again. I have in the past. Um, I love dogs. I am the white galactic dog as far as mine astrology is called, but I just connect with animals, period. Um, you see me with so many dogs because one of my multiple hats is that I'm a house sitter and dog sitter. Back in the day when I was a teacher, I started doing that in the summers um, just for extra cash and because it's easy to, yeah. I love dogs and getting paid and staying in you know nice families and their homes and you know it's just it was a well now it's just people love their dogs so much and they love having people stay in their home instead of putting them in a kennel when they go away um, I love so, if I had to pick I'd be a dog person but I also love cats I think I have a gig for you uh it's funny that you mentioned a white dog because there's someone on here, you may always already follow her. It's called um, Ashley Explains Everything. And she has a little white dog named Bella. Now she wants to, she's in the US. I think she's somewhere around uh, Mount Shasta. And she needs someone to, to maybe babysit her dog because she wants to go overseas. So I thought of you. So there might be a gig oh there. God, you. Do you see so how they say explains right? everything. And she just did a post this morning that she's, she's afraid to travel because she doesn't want to leave Bella. And I automatically thought of you. So maybe there's a gig for you. Uh, another I question. And you know, yeah. sometimes I find that I do exchanges. Like I have a great friend up in Colorado and she needs some help with the things she's doing and with her kids. And we've discussed an exchange. I like where we're at at this time in transition on a global and collective level because I'm seeing more and more of us realize that a this is a tag team event and that it's all word of mouth and b that as long as you show up you don't got to show off you just show up and all these beautiful things keep unfolding for us right yeah, bartering is fine like you said exchange is, is better than cash i mean cash is still king but exchange is even better and i think i have another friend that i've interviewed on this show uh that i love dearly and she's developing uh she's got better than podcasts her name is lindsay zimmerman she does better than podcasts. Please listen, because she's she's doing God's work and she's developing an app called Better Than Barter. Now it's not ready yet, but uh, and she's in the U.S. too. She's in South Dakota, uh, but she moves around. Like you're you're based in Philadelphia, but you're I think you're in the West right now, yeah. Right now I'm in Arizona. I'm all over, man. I was just in the Smoky Mountains last week. I was chilling with a friend in El Paso. Yeah. Um, I have embraced. You know, I used to get, let me start by saying, I used to get down on myself that I was such like a wanderer spirit. I remember being even in my 20s and thinking, when am I going to have one year that's just the same the whole year? And I do the same thing the next year. And, you know, I've gotten to the point where I just, I realize I, I, I'm I'm single. I don't have children. I tried marriage. That didn't work. And, and to tell you the truth, I don't really want it because I'm a lion, man. And you can't cage a lion. I like adventure. I want to live. Um, yeah. How long were you married, Jack? What's that? How long were you married? Um, it, oh, it was a short marriage, about two years. <laughs> it was two years? It, you know, it was about two years. It was one of the ones where someone proposes to you and you don't want to say yes. And then you're like, shit, am I going to wear this ring into working on Monday? And I did. And then I was too afraid to call off the wedding. And I remember when I was engaged, it was a very short engagement before you got married that it wasn't right that's interesting oh i knew the whole time i was telling my ancestors i would sit outside and drink wine and smoke cigarettes and tell my ancestors i'll do it different next time i'll do it different next time but i really did have the intentions of signing up for a true marriage and i really gave it all my effort it just it became very toxic and you know what it taught me the best lesson of unconditional love because when i left I wanted to hire a hitman and have him killed. And now, believe it or not, I did. I was so mad. I thought he ruined my life. 
I was embarrassed is what it was. I have, I have a question. I have a, I have a question. Um, and I ask all my guests this, or I'm going to in the future. Uh, are you nuts? Are you crazy? Uh, are you I'm a little sarcastic? I'm a little, I'm not, I, you can call me nuts. I'm a little sarcastic. Yeah. Sarcastic. Okay. And you, you have a van, right? Are you comfortable? No, I don't. I'm working to attain one. You have a what? Sorry. No, I'm working to attain a van. I do not have one. Okay. So if you're out there watching, uh, Kaylin, a light worker's journey, you can contact her on Instagram. If you have a van that's worth like like ten thousand dollars, but you want to give it to her for a thousand, please contact her because she will take care of it. And um, you know, yes. we'll also look after your dog as well. She's an expert. Um, the app Rover. Do you use that app? There's an app called Rover. Is so it worth it? Have... Sorry. Is it worth it? Okay, can I, I download that? Because here's why. Here's so whenever I'm again a wanderer, so I go to many locations. So. When I go on Rover, I just change the zip code of the area that I'm staying in, and then jobs will open up there. As soon as I make the connection, I'll book them once on Rover. You do a meet and greet, right? So you book them once on Rover, just for everyone's safety. And then after that, I just exchange, you know, donation-based, we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool. Um, I feel like you're a pioneer. I feel like you're, uh, you know, it's like the old West again, and, and you're, you're one of the pioneers that are kind of showing us the way. There's a name for it. They call it a bell uh, bellwether, I think. I think you're a bellwether. Um, thank you for doing it. Um, I'm inspired. I know other people are inspired. Uh, you're doing God's work. Um, is there anything else you want to plug? Is there something that you want to talk about that's you know you're aching to talk about or promote? Well, it's not promote necessarily, but I just want to remind people because I just think this is so true. Like. You are your home and you can do whatever you want. You are the currency. And I keep proving that to myself over and over and over again. Um, yes, monetary things. Sometimes you need cash for things. I get that. But you're the currency and you can show up places. And if you bring value and if you bring significance, people want you there. They don't, whether I'm a dog sitter or a tutor or whatever I'm doing out there. The other day I was cleaning someone's little pond out. I was like, well, yeah, I can do that. I've organized people's pantries while they're gone. As long as you bring value to that person and you listen to what their needs are, they see you differently. And I just want to remind people, like you said, like these, these nine to fives, I don't have a problem with them. It's just not for me. And the reason yeah. I don't like nine to fives is they keep people in the same place that maybe they don't like. So I just want to encourage people to get out there and try it. And if you don't like it, you can go back to your nine to five. Like there's a million of them. True. Yeah. A lot of people will take you back As up here. I mean, there's, there's so many jobs and uh, they keep whining. They're like, Oh, we can't find any workers. And it's not that there's a shortage of workers. There's a shortage of living wages is what the shortage is. And exactly. employers I want to keep saying this because employers need to hear that there's not a shortage of workers. There's a sh shortage of, of actual care for your workers. If you cared for your workers, like you really loved them and respected them and saw what their journey was, you would have so many people lining up to work for you um, and you would retain them too. And this is the new earth I think that we're entering is uh, the employers need to need to hear this loud and clear because millennials particularly, I'm an old, old guy. I'm too uh, old to call myself a millennial. Um, I'm a Gen Xer, um, but I, I understand we're the bridge generation, right? So we know the boomers, we know, you know, the, the new generation that's going to have the power is the millennials. And I understand their mission. I understand what they're doing. And I see how things are going to change. And they're going to be the generation that changes it. You know, I, we're here to assist. You know, we're here to, to guide them and assist them in any way that we can. But our generation does not have the power. Right? You know. I think that it's a ripple domino effect and things don't happen overnight, but they're happening the fastest they ever have. Time is speeding up and people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're looking around saying none of this shit makes sense. So if I'm doing something that doesn't make sense, screw everyone. It, it, none of it makes sense. Right. But it's about yeah. living, living in the dream. We can't just let it like paralyze us and we can't keep looking to false leaders for their false bullshit, excuse my language. Yeah. Like, oh, they keep on that. You, yeah. you did a post last week about false leadership. I want to hear your take on that. Uh, what's going on with that? Because that's kind of happening a lot right now, isn't it? 
everywhere. Well, let's start yeah. by saying that it's 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 in many categories. It's not just political. It's not just in I'm in the United States. It's not just in the United States. It's a global thing as far as uh, international politics go. But when you have these party systems, it creates more division. We're in a polarity, so I get that part. But even when we look at religion and the false leadership in religions, even when we look at people that maybe um, false gurus on maybe YouTube that use their 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 knowledge or their gnosis in a way that is not false leadership means that you don't have the best intentions for the people that you're leading. In other words, you're not a real leader. I, for one, think that New Earth there are no leaders. I mean, for example, you said something. Right. Like Thank you, right. There's multiple leaders. But there's I instead of saying leaders, I would like to say teachers and students and and teachers, teachers can become students uh, as well. Right. So every teacher has, a, has or every student has a teacher and every teacher is studying, you know, it's and it, interchangeable. And it's, it's it's yeah. it's an exchange that like I'm, I learned from you. I learned from so many people. I'm one of the people I'm never going to stop learning. And a lot of it comes from like my own experience at this point. And I'm always going to, if I feel called to research something, I will. But, you know, I'm not one of the ones I did my whole hermit phase where I was a mad scientist and I had YouTube going on one computer and a book going here and this going. You know, I did that for, for quite some time and um, yeah. I, I'll never take that part back. But now I'm at the part where, you know, some of us are and going back to the false leaders. Some of us are really doing the work. And I will say I'm one of them. I think you are one of them. And and by doing the work, I mean, yeah, like living in such if you go out to Babylon, that's Babylon. But you got your own Babylon, too, that when you clear it, you can live free no matter where you are. The valleys of the shadow of death or wherever. Yeah. And you're are, have you been up to Canada? Have you traveled up here? I we will. Love up here um because i'm gonna travel south I, I got invited to go down uh, the coast a guy wants to drive me down along you know chuckanut nut bay all the way down the washington coast down the oregon coast and down into california so i'm probably gonna make that trip i don't want to say for sure but probably in october um you know nothing is for sure but uh you know that's sort of calling me it's been calling me for over a year so people are like, when are you coming down? When are you coming down? Right. There's I have all these friends in America because I've connected with so many people, you know, yourself included, because you're an American. Um, yeah. You know, it's America, right? <laughs> Whatever, dude. I just had to drive through Border Patrol. They're like, are you an American citizen? I'm like, sure. Like, you know, all that straw man stuff doesn't really resonate with me. But yes, technically. That's well, I'm here in Canada, we, we're, we're like... Um, you know, second prize in a beauty contest, right? Because you guys are the greatest country on earth, or that's the belief. You know, Thank you're goodness. the best. Poker yeah, you're the best poker players on the planet. You're the best bluffers, right? The Bro, moon landing. So Everyone on the moon landings. We believed you. We believed that you went to the moon first. People believe a lot of things about America, which is why it amazes me they still come here, and then they're disappointed. The, the American dream was a nice pitch, a nice little tagline, but. You know, I was thinking about moving to Mexico for a while and people would say things like, well, what about the cartel and what about this and what about that? I'm like, bro, star, we got the mob and all kinds of violence. I'm from Philadelphia. Don't tell me. Like, what? And they just act like it's so dangerous in these other places. I'm like, my dollar can go further there. I'm, yeah. I'm being street smart. So, I mean, I'm not an idiot. I don't stay around places where, but you know what I mean? Like every other country, my point is when you're in America, they make it sound like it's so dangerous to leave and it's so amazing when you do and it's such a big deal and it has to cost a fortune. I'm like, that's all fake news. They're very tough on expats. I have a friend down in, in Ecuador and she's, she's a cut. She was in Detroit. She owned a house in Detroit and then she owned a house in California as well. Um, and then paradise burnt to the ground. The town of Paradise, California, burned to the ground. So a lot of people lost their homes. So she said, screw this. I'm going down to Ecuador. Um, but when she comes to visit, they're very hard on expats that try to come back to America. They don't like that you left. Because they don't want you to tell everyone that it sucks here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it sucks. I've I'm been to America. Kidding. I think it's beautiful. Maybe Canada just sucks more. I don't know. Um, I, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> There is a stigma here that 
And then I think most Americans would agree, no matter what state you're in, they make it sound like it's not a good idea to leave the country, whether it's 2022, 2020, or prior. I remember when I was in college and I studied abroad in Australia and everyone thought I was nuts. And I'm like, bro, it's like through the universities. It's not even like, it's just like, yeah, I'm taking a semester off. I'm going to work. I'm going to pay, get my ass over there. I'm going to live. People thought it, they couldn't believe it. And I'm just, it was really surprising because when I got there, I met people from all over the world all different ages in my travels. And I just realized Americans are the ones that they don't want to travel and it's really peculiar. They they're, they're always writing stories up here about Mexico, about you know another couple that got mugged down in Mexico because I think they don't want people to go down and discover that it's not that bad. It's not that dangerous. You know, yeah, they have some, some corrupt police and yeah, the cartel is definitely there. But, you know, other than that, you know, if you if you mind your own business, there's great community. There's a lot of Canadians down there. There's a lot of Americans. Uh, you can learn Spanish. You know, you can you can uh, open a business within reason. Um, you can run a remote business. Speaking of nomadic living, you know, you can just yeah. have a laptop and, and you know, you can walk dogs. You can babysit dogs down in Mexico just as easily as you can in Nevada or or in Philadelphia, you know, or or in Arizona. You know, Absolutely. the dogs heat in Arizona, but, uh, you know, just give it lots of water. Oh. <laughs> the truth is, I have a couple of friends down in Mexico that are Americans, or actually a Canadian friend too that moved down. And you know what? It's exactly what you said. If you ask me, there's danger everywhere. There is safety everywhere. You, if, if you believe that you're heavily protected, which I believe we are, and you don't go out playing in traffic, I really think that you can, again, live anywhere. It's just you do have to have some bravery. You do have to take a leap of faith and you do have to be creative and flexible. And I am very flex. I'm flexible. I'm creative too. I don't mind dropping things, picking up new ones um, in these. Adaptability. Adaptability. That's the Adaptability. best skill that, that you can have, I think, in this decade and then going forward. If you're adaptable and you can uh, shift quickly, that's going to be very valuable to you and your family and your friends. And people will look to you if you have that. Um, I have to wrap it up here because the, the owner of the building is eyeballing me. Uh, we're here live to tape with Kaylin Ryan, a lightworker's journey. Uh, we're outside the hearing clinic live to tape. And uh, I'm so happy you came on. I'll have you on. You'll be a repeat guest for sure. Um, so sorry I have to cut it short. But uh, That's okay. This was so much fun. Life, so uh, thanks for being here. And follow her. Follow her on Instagram or TikTok or wherever you can find her. A Lightworker's Journey. Um, uh, yeah. Peace out. Do you sing? Do you want to sing us out? Um, no, I don't. But I will say. She likes, she likes to roam around. She's never in one place. She goes from town to town, and then one sunny day, she came across some guy. They hopped right in her van of hers and drove around the world while she's a wanderer. They call her a wanderer. She wanders round, around, 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 around. That's so good. Thank you, Tim. I love you so much. Thanks for having me.